Hi, friends. Now, as we all know, people don't engage and connect with the best ideas. They engage and connect with the ideas that are communicated the best. And while I could talk all day about the principles of engagement and how we apply them to the voice, our body language, our slides, what I want to talk about right now is our at-home virtual setups. I'm going to show you how you can take your home setup from looking something like this, to this, or even to this. So, how do we do that? First and foremost, let's talk about the things that we can control, aka the things that don't cost us any money. Now, people generally don't care what you know until they know that you care. So we have to show them that we care, and judging by my appearance right now, I don't care about any virtual presentation I'm about to give. My hair is bad and my shirt is bad. So let's fix those two things first and foremost. Voila! Now my hair looks better and my clothes look better. Some tips when selecting clothes for a virtual meeting, avoid patterns. They can mess with the focus of a camera. So you wanna go with solid colors, but avoid black and white because they can mess with the white balance on a camera. The good news is you only have to do this from the waist up. Below the waist, you can wear sweatpants, fuzzy slippers, bare feet, or fuzzy slippers that look like bare feet. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is my glasses. I love these readers that I picked up at the grocery store, but they have plastic lenses, which means you can see the reflection of my screen and that I'm actually looking at Amazon right now. Now, I know none of you would ever do this in a virtual meeting, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So if you have glass lenses, make sure you use those. So now we have our non-reflective glasses on and our appearance is covered. So let's talk about the next most important thing. When you wanna create engagement, it's important to replicate an eye-to-eye -eye conversation, which means we wanna place our camera where a person's eyes would be. So we want it at eye level. Isn't that better? The reason we do that is because when our camera is way below our eye level, it creates the illusion to our audience that we're trying to dominate the presentation or the conversation. Likewise, if it's way above our eye level, it makes us feel and look subservient to the audience. We wanna recreate the feeling of a conversation, which is why we put it at eye level or a little trick, if it's just an inch or two above eye level, it'll make it feel like you're leaning in slightly and even more engaged, which is a good thing. And of course, once we place our camera, we want to look at it. Look directly into the lens to create that feeling of eye-to-eye -eye contact. If, of course, you have a hard time doing this, one simple solution is to put googly eyes on your camera like I do. It makes it a lot easier to remember to look at it. So now, we have decent clothes on, our camera's well-placed, we're looking at it. Let's talk about the next thing that we can fix without spending any money at all. That being our lighting. It's important that our main source of light, AKA the brightest one, is not behind us like it is for me right now. The main source of lighting in this room is above and behind my head, which is what's creating these kind of circles on the screen right here. We wanna get rid of those. So we wanna make sure that our main source of lighting is behind our camera. The easiest way to do that is to place your laptop or camera in front of a window. Of course, if you have the ability to set up small lights, you wanna make sure those are above, behind, and slightly to one side of the camera. What this'll do is give your face a little depth and make it easier to engage with. Like this, voila! Now to recreate this, like I said, all you have to do is take your main source of lighting, put it behind, above, and to one side of your camera. And that's exactly where my main source of lighting is right now. And what that does is it gives your face a little bit of depth and makes it easier to engage with. I also have a small table lamp that I put over here. And what this does is it gives a nice definition and outline to my body. Now, you can use table lamps, floor lamps, or if you'd like, Amazon sells a great set of two LED desk lamps that you can use to create this effect. They plug right into a USB port and they only cost 30 or $40. Now, since we're talking about spending a little money, I wanna tell you about the best $20 you can spend on your virtual setup. That being a USB lavalier 
microphone. This one is only $20 from Amazon and it plugs right into your computer. This particular one is a Movo LV1-USB. Up to this point in time, I've been speaking to you through the built-in microphone on my computer. But when I plug in that USB lavalier, I sound like this. Can you hear a difference? I think when it comes to virtual presentations, it's much more important to be heard than be seen. If your image is fuzzy, but people can clearly hear you, they can still connect with your message. However, it doesn't matter how clear your picture is. If people can't understand the words that you're saying, they're not going to be able to connect with you, which is why this microphone is so great because it also has a 20 foot cord, which means no matter where I am in my office while I'm presenting, I'm always going to sound like this. And now since we're talking about audio, let's talk about feedback and echoes. The reason that happens is because when our speakers make noise, sometimes our microphones can pick that up. The easiest way to get rid of feedback is to take our speakers and put them in our ears. We can do that by using headphones, earbuds, AirPods, or if you present a lot like I do, you might actually want to invest in some audio monitors. They're only 13 or $14 from Amazon. And now that we've covered audio, let's talk about our visual image. Up to this point in time, I've been using the built-in camera on my computer, but if I'm willing just to invest 50 to $100 on a webcam, I can get an image that looks like this. See the difference? I created this image using a webcam that only cost me $100, but you don't even need to spend that much. The two things you wanna make sure you're looking for when you're trying to find a webcam is can it stream in 1080p, high definition, and can it shoot in at least 30 frames per second? 30 frames per second at 1080p is as close as you can get to what the human eye creates and really creates that conversational feel. And I use this setup for hundreds of virtual meetings and presentations when I was just getting started. Of course, if you give a lot of presentations and a lot of keynotes and you wanna take things up a notch, I'll tell you that setup as well. I replaced this light with a much bigger, softer light to create this look. I replaced this lavalier mic with a Yeti X microphone, a studio microphone, so I could sound like this. And after I replaced the microphone with the Yeti, I replaced my webcam with a Canon SL3 DSLR camera so I could look like this. And this is the virtual setup that I use today. The only thing I'll add from time to time is a backdrop and some uplighting. Now, I don't expect you to go out and purchase all the equipment I've mentioned in this video today. I'm going to give you all the links, but my real hope is that you found one or two things that you wanna to use to make your virtual setup more engaging so that the great ideas you have can clearly be understood by your audiences and never undervalued. I know that your time is the most valuable asset you have, and I wanna thank you for sharing a little bit of it with me today. I look forward to connecting with you in the future.